Hey everybody, welcome back. Good to be with you once again. We're going to go ahead and jump right back into our ser series of Dirk builds here. Um, just as a quick recap, you remember on our last video we went over the Celtic Knotwork layout and how to actually put it on your Dirk and we're going to demonstrate the uh, intimidating carving process now. This is only one method. Um, there's different methods out there. You just have to experiment and see what works best for you, but I'm going to demonstrate the way that I do it that I've had good luck with so far. Uh, just real quick, a few things you're going to need. Obviously, you're going to need a set of uh, carving chisels. I've got several laid out right here. You can see I have a set of 10. Um, as I've said before, they're just a cheap set from Hobby Lobby. You may have to uh, sure up the blades where they meet the handle, reattach them with epoxy, and no matter what type of chisel you settle on, uh, they need to be razor hair shaving sharp. If they're anything but that, you will just struggle during this process, so they need to be sharp. Um, I've got this temporarily set up out at the picnic table just so you can see it better. If I were doing this on a real dirk, this is just a, a scrap piece of wood that we've talked about before, I would have this um, the dirk handle already on the blade and it mounted in a bench vise on my workbench and then the actual handle itself in the blade would be mounted in a vise chucked up in another vise. So in other words all I'm doing is getting it uh, up in the air. When I'm carving these things I will have them at about chest level. The reason I do that is you need to be comfortable when you're doing this. If um, you have it very low and you're hunched way over or too high, you're going to struggle, fatigue is going to set in, so uh, you need to be comfortable. So the two main things, good sharp chisels and at a comfortable work height. So without further ado, I'm going to come around to the other side of the camera and go ahead and just demonstrate how I begin this process, the actual carving of the knot work. I'm going to begin with um, a small angle chisel. I've also put a glove on. This isn't to uh, protect my hand or anything. This is just um, to give my thumbnail a little cushion. You could actually just cut that portion of the glove off, run a strip of tape around it. But um, the pressure that this creates uh, kind of kind of gets uncomfortable on your thumbnail there after a while. But what I do to begin is just outline it. There's different ways you can do it, but the, the way that I do it is to just push it along, which I'll just go ahead and demonstrate. And I'm just gently and easily sliding it along, trying to stay on my line as best I can. You want to take your time and go slow because uh, of course, if you slip, that would be bad. Take a big chunk out of something that you don't want to. But you have to go over all of your pencil lines and get them cut in, or st stabbed in, as some call it, with other forms of carving. But that's basically all you're doing with this first phase, is tracing these pencil lines by cutting with a knife. Um, you don't want to make it too shallow. If you don't make it fairly deep, this carving tends to look flat, which you don't want. You want it to be kind of rounded when we go to carve the rest of it in. Um, and you don't want to go too deep. If you go too deep, you won't be able to move the knife and you're going to struggle and you'll end up slipping. So um, not too deep, not too shallow. But just take your time, go nice and easy, essentially that's all you're doing is just tracing your lines. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it, finish up my lines, and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, so after you've got your outline work done, in other words you've traced over all your pencil lines uh, with the angled chisel and got those all cut in. The next step that I use to begin to reveal the uh, knot work is I will go to the ends of each piece of knot work. So in other words, there's an end right here where it butts in, there's an end right here, there's an end right here, there's an end right here. It's where the, the two intersections come together. And obviously that repeats itself all over this. But where the ends come together, 
what you want to do is make it look like it's dipping under. So in other words, this one right here, we want it to look like it's dipping under this one right here. So in order to achieve that, the first thing I'll do is take a small straight chisel and we're going to cut in an angle, a downward angle, to make it look like it's jumping under the top one. And if you can, you want to kind of do it at a radius, in other words, right here in the middle, perhaps just a little higher and then a little lower on the sides. So I'll come in from this direction. And don't be afraid to move and readjust. If something doesn't feel comfortable, you want to move because you can slip and take a hunk of wood out that's hard to put back. So don't be afraid to readjust and move. So I've got these two now taken care of. So I'm going to drop over and do this one right here. And again, it's the two that come together with one on top. So I've got these ones done again. They're coming together. Look like they're diving under this one on top. So we'll go over and get this guy now. Alright, so we'll just continue in that fashion on this three lace, again all the ends, and the same exact thing on this uh, single lace pattern where the ends come together, you want it to look like it's diving under this top one. Alright, so I'll go ahead and finish up the rest of them off camera and then we'll proceed to the next step. Okay, so now that we've got all of our ends uh, cut appropriately, we're going to go ahead and cut uh, the side portions of each section of knot work to make it look rounded. Um, one thing you want to try and do is make all these knots have an, a radius, in other words, high in the center and lower on each side so that it actually looks like you know, a knot. Rope is typically round. Um, that's why you need to make sure this, this cut was deep enough to achieve that. That's common with beginners. You make tend to make knot work look very flat and on originals, again, each section of knot work will have a radius to it. So in order to achieve that, uh, what I do is go in, stand up here, and you hold your chisel at an angle, stick it in, and you just follow the cut around all the way to the end then you can see I've got a strip of wood that'll come out there and we're going to do the same thing on this side angled strip of wood pops out Again, that's why it's important to have sharp chisels and good control. If something doesn't feel good, don't be afraid to change. And then this knot work is fairly large, so you'll have to go back in. And have it uh, come this way just a little bit till you get to the center. And that's essentially how you're going to create this knot work. It's uh, not overly hard, but it takes a little practice to get comfortable with it and acquire the proper feel. And then of course there's more complex patterns that you can mess with as you get accustomed to it. But you might need to go back the opposite direction clean it up and get a better deeper cut 
or completely ch change the way you're standing or whatever you need to do. Just don't be afraid to do it in order to get the correct look. Hopefully my hands aren't in the way. It was one problem I had with filming this. It's so small and intricate. It'd be hard to get it all on camera. Okay, so that one's uh, pretty close to being done. I'll refine it a little bit here off camera, and you're basically going to repeat that on all of these uh, knot sections now, both the singles and the doubles, until you get a nice radius. You don't have to get it perfect because we are going to sand it, so I'll go ahead and finish uh, carving these out off camera and get set up for the next step. Alright, so on camera this looks pretty rough. You can't really see any of the detail, but uh, you know, it is what it is, uh, limitations of the camera that I have currently. But um, it, I was doing this for keeps. I do a little bit neater job. I did a pretty quick rough job just to hurry up and get it done. But um, one thing after you get everything radiused in that you're going to have are these little center portions. Now I accidentally popped this one, <clears throat> this one out here, which you want to be careful of not to do. Take your time. But uh, you've got two options to deal with with the wood in these areas in between the knots. Now traditionally it'd be one of two things. Um, the first thing or first style I should say is uh, to carve this down so that it's more or less just a teeny little rounded portion of wood and what I'll do is I'll take this uh, triangular shaped chisel and go on the ends and push down you might not be able to see this on camera, but all I'm doing is basically forming a nice little dot of wood, a little protrusion in between the knots. And if you take your time and get these all to line up, if you've got uh, different uh, sections of knot work, it can be really attractive way to dress the dirk up and originally they did this a lot okay so I've got that one protruding trace around it with a pencil maybe you can see it a little better So that's one way you can do that. The other way, and again, some original dirks have this, this one already popped out so I'll go ahead and do it on this one, is to simply carve it out and you have sort of a sunken space in there and to do it I just follow the knot work around right where that is until you get a piece of wood to pop just like that and you can go over it several times and deepen it so you get a little section that's chewed out and don't be afraid to modify a chisel too if you have a chisel that's not quite working and needs ground down on its width you can go ahead and do that and with these cheaper chisels it's not a big deal because I don't have a fortune invested in them so if they break or wear out or whatever it's pretty cheap to uh, replace and I found that they've done a pretty good job the dirk that I'm working on now this will be the seventh one that I've carved out with these chisels and they're still doing a pretty good job again purchased at Hobby Lobby for 
less than ten dollars. So not sure if you're going to be able to see that on camera, but now go ahead and shade it in with a pencil so you can see it hopefully a little better. I've got a nice area carved out of there that highlights the center of this knot work. So you can do either way. Original Dirks had both of these methods with the center portions where the knots uh, come together and join. Um, it's totally up to you or just stick with what the original is you're trying to replicate. Same thing with on these single knots. It's a wider portion but you can carve it out radiusing all the way around here so you have a nice pinnacle or you can just take and chew the whole thing out and have a concave look there. So uh, whatever you prefer or whatever you're trying to copy, both methods were used. So the next step that you would uh, go about here is to sand these out. Now this is what takes um, rather rough looking carving and turns it into very neat and precise carving. Ideally, the better you get with your carving tools, the uh, least amount of cleanup that you want because it can uh, make the job a lot easier if you do it right the first time around and don't have a lot of cleanup to follow. But when working on something this small and this intricate, inevitably you're going to have some areas that you need to smooth and round and clean up. To do that, I've just got a series, grab a few of them here, little sections of wood that are just filed down to a chisel point, not sharp of course, and then various sizes, anywhere from a half inch down to like a sixteenth of an inch. You just take a little section of sandpaper wrap around it like so and that'll let you get in those little areas and start sanding them out and cleaning everything up. So if your carving is in pretty good shape you can start this with 220 grit if it's rough. Maybe you want to start with 150, but you don't want to go too coarse. Oop. Camera jolt there. You don't want to go too coarse because you'll really dig into your carving and you'll start losing the um, nice crisp look you're going for here. But sand it all the way around. Sand it where they butt together. Get in there in those middle sections and even on the main portion across it lengthways, get in there and clean up and uh, go over it several times. <laughs> That's really hasn't achieved very much but just wanted to display it. Go over it as many times as you can till it's as far along as you can possibly take it. You think you're not going to really make it any better. If it takes two or three times around and then you can jump up and grit, maybe go to 320 and typically I'll end it at about 400 grit to where we get a real nice smooth clean radius look on this knot work and uh, then you'll be ready for the next step. One other thing you can do where this cut has been made right here we have just a straight edge typically I will radius those by just coming in with the carving knife or chisel at a slight angle and just Push it around there until you've got a nice beveled edge. And that just looks a lot better with the finished dirk. Um, at this point, obviously I didn't sand that out, it was just a demonstration. You're ready for the next step, which we're going to cover on our next video because I don't want to make these videos too long and uh, go for uh, a decent amount of content in a shorter film. So on the next one, we're going to cover. Um, laying in the little uh, cut lines which uh, serve two purposes of decoration just draw one on here and also help give your hand a little grip on the dirk so I'll go into detail about how to cut these or burn these in there I use a wood burner to achieve this and also you retrace all your work and it makes it highlight and uh, makes it pop much better than if not put in so we'll cover that on the next video Thank you everybody for tuning in. We really appreciate everybody's support and subscriptions. I'd like to invite you to subscribe uh, so you'll get the notifications when the new videos come out. 
and sooner before later we're going to go ahead and knock out the next video. I know this one's been a while since the last one. Try not to let that happen again so we can uh, wrap this process up and show you the finished dirt. So thanks again for tuning in. Until next time, take care.